There we go. Okay, let's do this. Uh, welcome to Albion TV Presents, the AO Daily Show, your source of real news in an unreal world, keeping you up to date on the latest news, events, and the great community of Albion Online. Today is Thursday, the 28th of November. And as you can hear by listening to this lovely voice, I am hosting the show just by myself today. Uh, you might know that there is the uh, turkey eating holiday in some parts of the world and so Shosen decided to take a day off uh, to spend it with his family instead of goofing around here with me today. Um, in the spirit of this holiday that I must admit I have no real idea about how to celebrate it honestly um, other than eating a lot of chicken for a week and listening to the opinions of that one weird uncle uh, about how the world works or something apparently uh, anyway uh, i think i'm supposed to say that and i think i can speak for shows in there too that we are thankful for all of you guys who are listening to the show every day and of course make all of this possible um, and of course we are also very thankful for all the nice words of encouragement that we've received uh, since we started the AO daily show a few months ago. We will try to do our best to bring you the latest Albion News community updates and as much content as we can fit into this uh, half hour or so that we have every day. Um, and with that out of the way, we can get to today's show. Uh, I said that Shosen won't be here live for you today, but that doesn't mean you won't hear from him at least a little bit, as he managed to record an interview and send it to me. So I can play that for all of you today. Um, we will get to hear Shosen talk to GV Black, the main shot caller and council member of the Guild Fricks for about a good half hour. Uh, they will talk about the Guild Fricks and go into great detail about how Fricks approaches running a guild in Albion Online. Um, I have to say, I find it interesting that Frix claimed to be the most democratic guild in Albion. Well, let's find out together if that is true and whether or not, uh, whether or not Frix are still recruiting. I hope you enjoy this interview between Shosen and GB Black. And without further ado, let's get this started. Welcome to another episode of the Albion TV interview series. I am here with GV Black, a guy who, I think he's part of Fricks. I actually, I know he's part of Fricks, That's but I, I, I don't really know much else besides that. I, do you remember a couple of days ago, guys, when I played that, uh, the 12 days of Fricks miss and got up to like day seven? I'm pretty sure he had something to do with that. But other than that, it's a blank slate. So we're here today to find out who this man is and how he got on the show. How you doing, GV? I am doing great, Chosen. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I'm really sad that your listeners had to listen to me belting out the vocals of Frick, uh, the 12 Days of Fricksmas the other day. I'm glad you cut it off early so you didn't endure all of it. Uh, but I'm excited to talk about myself a little bit, Fricks, uh, who I love and mm -hmm. who I am, and anything else any questions you guys have you might think is interesting uh i've been playing the game luckily and unluckily since just after release i joined fricks about a month after that maybe two i have been in fricks for almost all of my career in albion and i rejoined the guild about 11 and a half months ago since then we made some major changes uh had a lot of fun uh came up with some cool new systems i'm down to talk about it all and hopefully it's interesting I'm also the uh, lead ZVZ shot caller for Fricks and ZVZ organizer, kind of de facto. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly have a lot of experience in it. I don't think I'm the best uh, or one of them, but I have a lot of experience in it because I've been doing it for so long now. Uh, so I have some interesting insight, I think, into strategy on the battlefield and what I think is most importantly in, important in ZVZ's shot calling. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to talk about that stuff at a later time too. 
All right. And you told me that there was something very specific that you wanted to be on the show for. I wasn't sure exactly what it was for. I was, I'm assuming it's because of the recent drama. Well, the recent, um, I guess we would say drama, is certainly interesting, and I'm definitely down to answer questions about it. But shows, and you know, because I've said it, all publicity is good publicity. Fricks are recruiting. I want Fricks to become the biggest guild in Albion Online. It's been mm. one of our uh, mission statements. Uh, that 300 person cap certainly hurts it. Robbie Hankis, if you hear me, help me out. Uh, but we want to recruit. Uh, so I'm here to tell you guys everything I know, answer any interesting questions, and also maybe, maybe mm -hmm. convert one of you guys to Fricks. You might be able to get to do that. It depends on what day of the week this show airs. Oh, wait. It's going to air tomorrow on Thanksgiving. Are you ready for Thanksgiving yet? Oh, wow. I certainly am. I just, I'm a dentist in real life. So just got out of work. I rolled home, looking forward to the interview. Did my quick brown fox, jumped over the lazy dogs. Uh, I'm excited for Thanksgiving tomorrow. You know, I'll did uh, now. This is this is weird because I, I've known some very dangerous dentists. I've watched Little Shop of Horrors uh, intently, um, and now I can see how you were the one who stabbed Vetus in the back. <laughs> yes, with a very sharp and very small instrument. Mm. I. I think that is some super interesting stuff, too. The story of uh, Squeedus, as we like to call him. Yes, yes. Uh, and Bricks, how the community came to be. Uh, his history as the GM of the guild up until very recently uh, because he just doesn't play Albion anymore. Uh, yeah. Hopefully we can rope him back in for the Queen update. Oh, I, I'm hoping to get a lot of uh, original players and old school players back with Queen. But I understand oh, the needing some time. But tell us that story. I understand that was a very interesting story. It wasn't a singular moment in time. I un from what I understand, like almost a year ago, like Fricks went through a, a really rough patch, right? I can tell you that story ad nauseum and talk your ear off all day about it, but I, I think I'll just give you the quick TLDR. Okay. Uh, Fricks formed right after launch. Vetus was there from the beginning, obviously, making the community. Uh, had some help of some amazing other Fricks. Uh, they had a big merger with TFC. TFC merged into Fricks. Uh, Fricks kept growing and growing. In the early days, we were in the Woke Alliance in the massive fight versus the original iteration of Oops fighting over Mercy. Mm. I remember those days, everyone fighting over the static dungeons and DR bangs, good times. Uh, that was Fricks in the real early days. After the woke days ended, that's really when season rankings started and season one came around. Mm -hmm. Season one and two, Fricks were right there. Strong guild, uh, really competitive, had a good GVG team or teams, very competitive uh, on ZVZ as well. We had some awesome shot callers back in the day too. My personal, he knows I love him, but my boy Trollhouse C., uh, one of the best shot callers ever taught me most of what I know. We actually roped him into playing a reset day with us recently. Oh, nice. Uh, so we learned a lot back then. We were strong back then. Uh, we ended up in season two, I believe, finishing eighth, the mm. last crystal ranked guild, which was amazing for us. Uh, season three, we ended up joining, hmm, I believe it was the Power Alliance, with, uh, which then changed into the Alone Alliance. Midway through th season three, the great coup of September 2018 with Fricks, where Vetus's whole leadership team simultaneously approached him, uh, said, if you don't hand over ownership of the guild to one of us, we will be leaving the guild. Uh, Vetus did not want to hand over ownership. It was his baby. I respect the hell out of that, although at the time I wanted him to hand it over uh, because I didn't want to see the baby get split in half. The baby did get cut in half um, mm. in the middle of season three. So season three was a bit of a downturn. And after season three, we were in a really tough patch. Uh, we had just bought a home plot in Mercia, Sunlit Grove, I believe, which oh. we then sold yeah. to Derek for 100 million silver back in the day. I lived in Sunlit um, for a little while. I, Sunlit's been around the block, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah, well, Sunlit's a, it's a happening place. Hey, it's lit. So after we sold that town plot, we had liquidated all our resources. Unfortunately, the leadership team that left Fricks had access to all of or most of the guild's assets, which for different reasons and rationale that people tried to explain um, was lost. Uh, and hundreds of millions of silver went what? to somewhere. Where? Uh, yeah, good question. 
uh, in assets, there's logs and stuff. It's not the most interesting stuff. So your traditional, uh, every, somebody stealing everything from the guild story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but we had a lot of room to make up then. Vetus had no leadership team. I was a, a pleb at this point still. Um, so he brought in a few of us to try to help. Things were going in the wrong direction. In Albion, and I think in most games like this, when a community starts to take a downturn, leveling off the ship uh, is challenging. It's and, the hardest part. Oh, it's tough. And I've been through it so many times now. Uh, but, you know, once 10 people quit, 20 more are going to follow. Yep. Um, and that happened badly in September. Uh, and you can check, you know, any Albion DB or whatever uh, attendance or rankings or membership, I guess we would say. Um, and you can see us dive down to nothing. So season four, um, I ended up leaving Fricks as well. Wasn't enjoying the game at the time. There weren't enough active players. Uh, we didn't really have a plan and I didn't have the time to come up with a great plan to fix the guild. Um, so I joined Savage for three months, had a great time, met some awesome people, uh, learned a lot more about shot calling. Slice, who is the leader of Savage, is also, I think, one of the best CVZ shot callers that I've ever played with. Um, he stepped away from the game in late December. I had nowhere to go. I always wanted to try this idea of a representative democracy in a game like this. Mm -hmm. um, so within three to four days, myself and Unsung Omega, who's a good friend of mine uh, and good friend of Vetus's, uh, and he also joined Savage with me. We approached Vetus. We said, we have this crazy idea. We're going to write the Frickstitution. We're going to create a representative democracy. The whole problem over the Fricks coup was over leadership and who was in that role. Mm -hmm. So we said, nobody is going to be in sole control anymore. And we're going to have a council of Fricks who make all major and minor decisions. And we took that idea and we ran with it. Is and it called the, the Council of Fricks? Good question. Fricks Council. Uh, oh, and Council. there are seven of us, of which Vetus is still one. Mm -hmm. So the seven Fricks Council members, there were only five in the beginning, uh, make all decisions for the guild. We have specific channels where we vote. Uh, I like to say we're the most transparent and democratic guild in Albion. I truly believe that, and I think it's pretty obvious. All our votes eventually become public to all Fricks, all non-OPSEC or COMSEC votes, uh, things that don't involve player discipline or... Um, territory control etc becomes public knowledge afterwards uh and the but majority that's all the rules. good votes um yeah yeah i guess that that is the like what the else what else are we gonna uh like oh, man. who are we gonna give the eight three judy boots to no oh, like nobody cares oh, about man. that vote what color is gonna be the new fricks flag Nobody cares. No, we, they want to know how you're punishing your Frick. So we want to hear that there's a public execution. A Frick I'm execution. I'm so happy you brought that up, Chosen, because I realized probably about six months into this little project that I gave people the best platform ever to complain. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we did decide to change our flag, there was a, I would say, a month-long battle over it. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> so it, these votes are debated ad nauseum. We number the votes um, by season and by vote number. So for season seven, I'm looking here. There were 173, 176 votes. So we go through a lot of decisions, um, and some of them seem boring. Like here's one used by two tabs on an island. And some of them are more interesting, kicking people with evidence, um, mm. changing alliances. Every alliance change we've made has been an open democratic process since the Frick Dependence Day. Uh, we have gathered as many good options as we can, vetted them all, presented pros and cons lists to our members, and had our members vote on them. Good. good. Following that, we made a we made council votes. That's how we've determined which alliance we've gone into every single time. So I'm super proud of how we've been able to distribute power to these seven council members. The only thing more interesting than that to me, because well, I've always believed if we build it, it will grow is that all seven of those members are elected council members. Can I can so I we, ask on a recent vote course. then? Uh, what, yeah, was sure. the, what was the, the vote count on the decision to leave once? Oh, that's, a, that's an interesting... 
question, and the answer to that question is there was no vote. Was that a singular vote? Was yes, that a singular vote? There was vote? no vote. There was no vote. We, I can tell you the long story short was I found out Ecstasis was leaving yesterday for sure. Mm -hmm. They announced it to everyone, so I found out when everyone else found out. Um, I have been talking to Asterio and some of the other Vastly members recently about their plans for the future. And I don't know if I have a whole lot of great details on that right now and where both of our guilds are going. Uh, but then there was some some argument over a castle last night. It sounded like things didn't go too well. Yeah, I, I heard that, uh, like, somebody else showed up. Yeah, I unfortunately was not there, but I know some people were upset about it, um, maybe rightfully so. But So was it, like, from what I understand, Ecstasis basically started working with Blue Army in a way, and Blue Army just came over and ran over uh, Vastly Superior. That's and what I heard too, but I don't Ecstasis have good info. took over the t took over the castle. Yes, yes, mm. yes. Okay, that is exactly what I heard, but I can't say I have any good insider info. And on then Ecstasis kicked out the Fricks because once like Vastly Superior was out, there was no reason to keep uh, the Fricks around. Yeah, I guess there just isn't an alliance once they once Vastly Superior quit abruptly and once Ecstasis already said they were leaving the alliance. Yeah. I mean, I kind of feel well, like Ecstasis Fricks is the only guild left. Ecstasis is still in the alliance. I with, know. I uh, can't believe it. Laboratorios is just our alt guild, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, So oh. Laboratorios is the – we have all our alt – I mean, all the Fricks alts are still in that guild. Um, but we have all our alts in there. Well, that sounds Season like a – situation for dirty pool if i've ever heard dirty pool about to happen oh fricks are too kind we have yeah. like rules against spying which i disagreed what? with but i was what I was, was the vote on that oh man i have to dig it up but like we're not even allowed to spy by definition wow i know i know wow uh, so an old vote i voted no doesn't matter majority rules <sighs> We're lame. We're too tame. We're too nice. We're too. And is this how no. you got the no mandatory content as well <laughs> by a vote? Man, no mandatory content. Unsung Vetus and I came together and we said this has to be one of the staples of the guild. It was a staple of Savage, and that's what made me fall in love. Well, with I've, it. I've heard some Previous good things about Savage. I keep Savage keeps coming up again and again, and I keep hearing good things about them. You know, little birdie told me they may be coming up again sometime shortly. Uh -huh. um, yeah, you may have to reach out to one of them uh, and get you in contact. Anyway, um, they had some great systems in place, and one was no mandatory content. Uh, they encouraged everyone to be there, as do we, but they never forced people. You weren't penalized if you didn't show up. Uh, before that, I was in Fricks. There was mandatory content, CTAs, uh, change to all. And this happened multiple times a day. It created animosity within the guild. I absolutely disagree with it. I don't think it's a wise way to run a community or a guild unless you're trying to create animosity. Mm -hmm. um, I understand the arguments for it, and we still have argued over it so many times in Fricks. It comes up once every two months. Um, but we're strictly against it, so we put the line in the Fricks institution, no mandatory content ever. So could that be changed? Yeah, of course. Uh, Does it take a two-thirds majority to change a line in the Frick Institution? <laughs> that's a good question, but the answer is no. Uh, simple majority votes have edited the Frick Institution. The only thing that requires a two-thirds majority vote is impeachment of a Frick's council. Oh, and is that by the council itself or is that by the people of the Fricks? Another good question, Chosen. You just You lead me on. Uh, it has to be a simple majority of fricks via a 48-hour vote, oh. followed by a council vote of a supermajority. There's only been one instance ever, and it failed via the guild vote uh, in about a two-to-one ratio. Who was trying to kick out Vetus? <laughs> it was not Vetus. It was not Vetus, actually. Oh, people got to stop trying to kick out Vetus. Was it his beard? Did they kick out his beard? No, no. The beard stays. The, the left side of his beard kind of just went whoop. It was gone. I watched the that. The beard stays. <laughs> yeah, that was something. The beard stays. Okay. So so, so can we hear the details? What happened? Because this just got juicy. You almost outed a, like. Frick's council member. Frick's council member. official. And I hear that this is all open. So now the, the, the world of Albion at a whole wants to hear this. I'm like, I'm here with wow. my popcorn. Wow. 
you know i <laughs> the the dilemma it it's not the most interesting thing in the oh. world it was over it was over uh what many people believed and myself believed was um defense of a hate group um oh, and wow. one of our tenants as i'm sure you were aware is absolutely no hate no slurs right no, anything in fricks so there was a, a large contingent of the community that thought this member went over the line um but two-thirds of the guild in a vote well, disagreed uh so the guild spoke and the guild disagreed and that was that you have to be accepting of people but i don't tolerate personally i don't tolerate that in front of me um and if i see something i'm going to condemn it loudly uh, and that's the community that we've built. And I think that is another major part of what brings people into it. People want to play video games. They don't want to hear kids make racist jokes. Uh, so we're here to give them that community. Well, everybody needs a place that they can enjoy. And there, there's a wide variety of places for people in Albion. That is one way Absolutely. of stating it. Uh, though I have to say, I've come across a few wholesome guilds lately. It's been enjoyable. You were just mentioning Savage. Uh, like the, what is it? Um, one of us is in Viz. I did a love play the, Love the boys over there. Yeah. Good friends with them. Yeah, I did, a, I did a play session with them the other day. It was a lot love of fun. You. Yeah. Yeah, I, great people. I definitely, Shout out to Midnight Frostbite. I definitely. Shout out to their whole leadership team. <laughs> Continue, I, I'm sorry. I, oh, that's okay. Yeah, I, I definitely, I was going to say is I definitely went on there and I, like started uh cursing like in the first two seconds that i was in the channel because they had push to talk rules and i was what uh -huh. is this bullshit and they were like um no cursing and i was like what <laughs> bullshit they're, they're a little bit more wholesome <laughs> and family friendly than we are uh and i i know i personally have a colorful language um but it it never drops into hate or anything no like no there's a big difference and no I, exactly Exactly. I yeah, would say we, there there know, are very course, few guilds in Albion that you would you would describe that way, and there, I would say we'd want to put them on the fringe. But it, it is fun to make if fun one of. One of us is in Viz is a family friendly guild. They're, they're very I think family. That's friendly. an awesome niche that they fill, where they can have kids, they can have parents playing together, and it can be a welcoming environment. For yeah, absolutely. I think they're they're very enjoyable. I had a great time playing with them, and it's good to see that there's a variety of more wholesome guilds like fricks is pretty wholesome here they got a democracy going like yeah we found our our niche and i want to hammer into that niche um and we do things differently than some other guilds just like you said there's a community for everyone in this game uh and we want to be a different type of community and we've succeeded in that as have one of us is in bits mm -hmm. absolutely Absolutely. Is there uh, anything else you want to talk to? We were talking about your drama recently, but you guys have, other than the drama, the recent drama anyway, you guys are on a, a very good upswing, right? You guys are doing quite well as a guild. Since this Frickstitution has gone in place, I've seen you guys doing better and better. I mean, yes, there's no Vetus anymore, and we, we wave to him from afar and hope that he returns to us one day. But other than that, the Fricks are doing well. I think I think we're excelling right now and last season have been massive gains. The last couple days we had another smaller guild called Clockwork Champions merge into Fricks. They're assimilating well. We're always trying to help out these smaller guilds because as you and I alluded to earlier, the season point sharing system is tricky. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've been we've been rapidly improving. And last season, my goal, personal goal is to really beat our season two finish, which was rank eight. Uh, and last season we pushed, we tried. Um, yeah, that we came down hard to enough. It, yeah. And we came down to 13th and conflict that last day of the season, <laughs> they wiped the floor with us. I know. I, I was, yeah. when I, we were talking about sunlit before that's, I was with conflict for a short uh -huh. period when they live in sunlit. So. Oh, that last day of the season, they wiped the floor with us. We played. I was online till 5 a.m. until I finally said, boys, this ain't going to happen. They're going to beat us. Can we? Can I please? And they, they <laughs> allowed me to slumber. So we had we finished 13th last season. That's uh, respectable. It's, and I was it's very, very happy. respectable. If you look at the number of guilds we have competing every season, 13th is incredible. You did very well. 
I'm super proud with our finish last season. I want to do better every single season. I'm always looking for improvement. And people will ask me often, well, what's your big goal with the guild? Where do you see yourself one day? Not only the biggest guild, but number one. Um, I know we're far away from that still, but that's the push. That's what we're striving for. Uh, we have a long way to go, but things have improved vastly. And it just shows that without mandatory content, with an environment of friendship and positivity that condemns hate, uh, you could still have a, a very successful and competitive guild. And I believe that we compete at the, the most competitive aspects of the game every day. Well, do you guys watch Pokemon every day too? Because it sounds like it from that just that last section. I <laughs> I swear that was just a line from the show, no, right? Yeah, that's where I, got it. <laughs> I didn't mean to plagiarize it, but I'm sure if you dive deep into it, you could probably rip that off of uh, Ash Ketchum. Oh, I think it's the theme song. Um, very good. Uh, so yeah, that's awesome. What would you say other than your strong bonds of friendship? What is the strongest uh, phase of the Fricks? What is it? Is it the ZVZ? Are you guys currently focusing on PVE and just building everybody up? Do you have some kind of uh, giant economic warehouse that we are all unaware of and that we are all currently buying Fricks shields? <laughs> That's another really good question, Shosen. Let me start with the last point, money, uh, because I didn't touch on this earlier. Another thing that we do better than everyone, we've learned our lesson, and I won't be spurned twice. We had hundreds of millions of silver in assets stolen from us. Our new philosophy, we have one person, because that's what the game makes you have a minimum of, who has access to all the funds. That's Vetus right now and has always been. Uh, I believe Vetus is, uh, he has to answer to the community and has very little incentive to ever steal from Fricks. So we keep all of our assets or at least 95% of our assets in liquid funds, about 10% of that gold and about 90% of its silver. So we track this in a funds tracking spreadsheet, which is open to the public, linked in the Frick Institution. It shows our income, our expenditures uh, month by month. We track how much we're spending in programs. We give people liquid silver for mm -hmm. everything. If very you nice, die in a nice. ZVZ, you get liquid silver. I can't be responsible for holding masses of gear on hand and distributing out piece by piece. If you die, we pay X amount of silver based on your rank within the guild. Interesting. Uh, it also gives people an idea of what they should be bringing to a ZVZ. And we have uh, minimum requirements. Although we have no mandatory content, if you want to participate in certain events, you must accept feedback. So when people come to my ZVZs, which they will be doing in 20 minutes or so, um, I'll line them up on the beach. We'll inspect them one by one. We'll make sure they're in the appropriate approved builds, of which there are many, and I'm very lenient. Uh, but it's not a free-for-all just because we don't have mandatory content or strict rules of the sort. So that's that goes into our treasury. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of money, we have, after Frick Dependence Day, I believe we had a little bit over 200 million silver. And I think right now uh, we have about 800 million in liquid assets and probably a good 200 million or so in in physical assets, um, mostly just season notes from last season. Very impressive. I, I like hearing it. That's sounds like you guys have a way of handling your business that is a little less... Um overhead than some other guilds have to deal with and keeps the process smooth so there's very little arguing you know what you're going to get you know what you have to do you but said the major word there chosen overhead and it's something we're always trying to crush because the matter of fact is if you have an awesome passionate member who's willing to oversee a system that has a lot of overhead it will work well but if that member you know, quits the game uh their appendix ruptures, which mine did on oh, in so the March invasion. Oh, no, I'm good now. Don't worry. Um, the point being, if one person drops with these massive overhead systems, uh, it can be difficult to recover from. Similarly, if a guild leader or somebody who's so instrumental quits the guild or stops playing the game, it can destroy a whole guild. But I believe Fricks are self-sustainable now. Um, we have elections every couple months. There's always new people being cycled in, except me, because... The Fricks love me and they keep voting for me. We're self-sustainable in that aspect. In terms of how do we manage that cash, it's so easy looking at a piece of paper seeing, okay, I have 800 million silver. I end up paying about 200 million silver a month in ZVZ reimbursements. I end up earning about 100 million silver a month in siphoned energy from territories, yada, yada. 
So for instance, in ZVZ, our minimum required gear would be tier seven uh, ZVZ equivalent, unless instructed otherwise on certain times. Um, you wear that gear and you die, pretty much no questions asked, up to four times a day, you get 550,000 silver. We do almost the same thing with GVGs. For a GVG, any team, they just have to get approved. We have approved every single team that's ever come to a vote. Uh, if they die in a crystal or regular GVG, they itemize their losses, how much they paid for their gear, or basically how much it goes for in Carleon. They tell us how much it is. We give them that much liquid silver back, up to 10 million silver. They get paid 5 million silver if they win any match or 1 million silver if they win any crystal GVG. Hmm. So it's all just throwing around silver to numbers that make sense to us in the guild. Obviously, the guilds argued about what these numbers should be, and these are the numbers we've fallen on for now. Well, again, if somebody didn't like it, they could just institute a policy change and you could have a vote. Which is what happens all the time. Uh, when our first ZVZ reimbursement, which we refer to as death and taxes, mm -hmm. came in, it was only 400,000 silver. The game has changed a bit. Uh, we ask for a, a little more now, so now we're up to 550. So these things are fluid, they're easy to change, and they're easy systems to manage. It's very simple after a lost ZVZ because of lag or DDoS because we never lose on an even playing field. Um, it's very easy to give out that. Well, when I hear all these good systems and I hear how you guys are, are working and I hear how things are going well, I wonder how in the world is it even possible that Fricks are recruiting? Because we only allow for 300 people inside of a guild. And it sounds like you have a very good place to play, uh, very stable environment, and you know how to get things going so you have content to do. And it's not even required if you don't want to bang your head against a wall four times a day. Exactly. The answer to that is we're pretty full. We have 267 members right now. We kick members who haven't been active in-game for two weeks. We deperm them. We ping them and say, hey, you're welcome to come back whenever you want, but we had to remove you due to inactivity. We've had a recent downturn in attendance um, about two months ago. Again, one of those times where the everyone's pets or heads are falling off, Vetus quit the game, no one knows what's going to happen to Fricks. We always bounce back. Mm -hmm. um, so we have bounced back, and we've uh, gained about 70 active members over the last month or so. Um, we had an alt guild at the peak of free-to-play, I was a big proponent of saying that we need to find the applications that are well detailed. It doesn't matter how much fame they have. I personally don't believe Albion is the most difficult game in the world to play. You need to find these nerds who have played video games their whole lives who just found Albion because it's free to play and cultivate them. So we did. And at that point, that's when we came up with different ranks for the guild. We started calling these poor guys Fricklings, which we still do. The Fricklings. I like yeah. it. Uh, the yeah, fricklings. it's kind of sick and twisted. Um, we started calling these guys Fricklings. We made an alt guild, which we refer to as our second guild, just an extension because of an arbitrary player count. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's called Frickser Recruiting. Since I think population dropped in our guild, I think population dipped a bit just overall. Um and I think our numbers may be kind of in line with that. Uh, but since that, we've been able to consolidate back to one guild with no alts in that guild. Um, and, you know, we're trying to fill it up. And when we do, which hopefully will happen within the next month or so, mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to have that debate and argument again about how to handle it. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, before I let you go, uh, because we're running out of time here, I do want to get into one more debate or argument that you might be having soon. What are you guys going to be doing for an alliance? Y you don't have once anymore and you and vastly superior are just both running around i guess you guys are very friendly um but running around independent is that going to be the case going forward so the answer to that is i'm not sure yet uh one i can't make any unilateral decisions so although i am working on it behind the scenes everything will be vetted through my whole guild through the leadership team everyone will have a chance to give input and then we'll make a joint decision mm. uh right now I have no plan to join an alliance, but we've already started vetting options. We need to do what makes sense for Fricks. Um, I always say Fricks first. Mm -hmm. I think we're the best allies in the game. We respond respectfully. We show up to events when we're asked, um, and we're begging to show up when we're not asked. Uh, but it's always, in my opinion, and I think it's okay to be selfish here, it's about Fricks first. Uh, the new season change mechanics, like you alluded to, do favor single guilds um, 
or at least it's it's a very viable option now due to the point sharing split. So right now, the only thing that's changed is since we do not have a strong functioning GVG team, which is another story, um, is we're not really participating in war camps the last couple of days, today, yesterday, probably tomorrow. Uh, but we still have castles every day, twice a day, Avalonian mages every day, at least twice a day. Uh, so there's a lot of work to be done still. Um, and a lot of points to be gotten solo. Uh, but we're, you know, if you, anyone hears this and you have a good, interesting offer, I'm all ears. I'm always open to propositions. But so you, no no true plans yet is the real okay. answer. So what you're saying is Fricks are recruiting alliances. Potentially. Okay. Potentially. I'm open. I'm right. open. All options are on the table. And I say that without alluding to weapon forces. Oh. Um, as far as vastly superior goes... I, uh, I really enjoy playing with those guys. They are, they're very good at the game. Uh, they're good at ZVZing. Their members are trained well. Um, their members are many old fricks, unfortunately, and fortunately. Uh, good fricks, too. Uh, they're a ton of fun to play alongside. In addition, their two lead shot callers right now, Asterial and Julia, mm -hmm. um, I play really well with. And I love leading fights side by side with them. We had... I mean, just two days ago, we had some awesome fights at Castles. Um, so I would, of course, like to keep playing with those guys. But we'll see what they want to do, too. They're strong, and I know that they feel slighted because of poor Alliance members in the past. Right, yeah. And and I totally respect that, that they've had you know, their fair share of getting burned, as mm -hmm. have we. And even in this most recent scenario, we're kind of uh, thrown by the wayside while, while others um, disagree. And well, change their minds without us. If you do make a, a, a new alliance, uh, take this name under consideration. Good guilds only. I. It's interesting. I really liked <laughs> Asterial's idea of hi, bud. Hi, bud. I really like hi, bud. So, uh, hey, Asterial, if you're listening, hi, bud. All right. Well, thank you very much, GV Black, for showing up. Uh, we're glad to hear that Fricks are doing well. We weren't glad to hear about the 12 days of Fricksmas. Yeah, I don't blame you. Oh, man, that was rough. I was under the influence in the woods, to my defense. Wait, you did that just, like, live goofing around in the woods one day? <laughs> uh, Me and my buddy, on Saturday morning, we woke up. Uh, we were having a little retreat, and we had three cell phones, one with the text, one with the music playing off of a YouTube video, and another one recording. And we did it outside in about... That that sounds pretty. As you can tell. No, that sounds pretty Fricksmas right there. That sounds like the way a Vetus song is produced. Um, it's like you guys have learned from the best. We well, certainly have. Thank you very much. We appreciate this, and this was a hey, good can fun. I pitch something real quick. Oh, for sure. One, go for it. Discord.io slash Fricks. Type slash apply in Albion chat. Hit me up in DMs, um, and I will guide you and show. All right, before we go, are there any other shout outs you'd like to make? A shout out, I always have to shout out my Fricks Council, who work with me and deal with me all the time, who are elected and stuck in their position, mm -hmm. or the Council, as we like to call them, Hong Kong. Uh, and I have to shout out my Shot Callers team because they work with me. They listen to me yell and rant and rave about how inadequate we are, and they still put up with it. Awesome. Well, I'll, I'll say thank you once again, and uh, then we're going to get out of here. Enjoy your holiday, everyone. And if you don't have a holiday today, enjoy uh, hanging out with Bogle. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks for your time, Chosen. Anytime, man. We'll have to do this again because, we, uh, like we said, we'll do a, uh, a ZVZ show. I would love to do a – if you have like a – if you want to do like a 20 to 30-minute newbie, how do you ZVZ? What are the things in the mind of a shot caller? I definitely think that would be interesting for people, and I can write up a bit of a script so I have more to go on. That would be great. Uh, we do have that Newbie Tuesday show where we do try to teach a couple of lessons, and uh, I think that would work perfect. Uh, uh, Frick's member teaching new players how to ZVZ sounds great. All right. Thank you, everyone, and I will see you guys next time. All right, that was the interview with GV Black of Fricks. Um, very cool interview, very eloquent man, I have to say. Uh, why don't you check out their guild, their Discord? It's uh, on the screen. It's uh, discord.io forward slash Fricks, if I read this right. 
And yeah, uh, if you are in the Americas where you celebrate Turkey Eating Day, I wish you a very nice holiday. Don't stuff your face too much with these roasted uh, chickens. Um, but if you're not going to eat any chicken today, then I just wish you a good night, a good evening. Uh, enjoy your Albion day. Um, we will end the show here today. There will be no live action because I think Lupac is in Dubai. Shosen is with his family and Tazik, I think, is also eating a lot of roasted chickens. All right, guys, then... Have a good day, have a good night, and as always, you can watch this very show every day here at Albion Online, twitch.tv Albion Online. You can listen to us later on YouTube and SoundCloud forward slash Albion.tv. Have a good day, have a nice holiday, enjoy your day. Goodbye.